Okay, today we are looking at uh, some shuttle controls for the sequencer. So I'm going to demo that in VR because I've been working on it in VR. So that essentially, if you have a sequence, a pre-made sequence, uh, you can, as you can see, I can use the thumbstick on the controller to scrub through it. So I can uh, line up my shot um, and then reset it. And then when I go to record, I now know that I'm going to have the perfect shot. I went too far. Um, let's put that back. Yeah, so just like that. Um, so it's pretty easy, but um, there's sort of a, a caveat to it. So um, I'll explain that out of VR. Um, and this is running, if you're curious, on the Oculus Quest now. I'm uh, using the, I'm trying out the Quest with the link cable. Um, sorry, not with the link cable, with the charge cable it came with. So I've been pretty impressed with it and its performance. Alrighty, so uh, we're just in an example project I have created. Um, rather simple setup. Uh, this will work with any input, anything really. So, uh, you know, the, use it wherever. Um, I guess there might be a way to use it with end display, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say probably not. Um, so. Uh, what I've got here is a blueprint for the camera here uh, and a test sequence that I set up. So this has just got the uh, little statue on the table blasting off like a rocket. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to uh, be able to scrub through that in-game like I was showing in VR. Um, so if we open up our camera setup, uh, this is missing a lot of stuff. This is very bare bones. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's what we got. So we're going to start by actually uh, adding some inputs. So that's project settings, then input. Um, and we want an axis mapping. Um, now, if you're doing keys or things, um, then make sure you set both and do the scale. So the, one with the key that you want to sort of... Um, go backwards in the timeline needs to be the negative value. If you're good, if you're doing say a game input, like a gamepad, like an Xbox controller, then you can just leave it as is. Like if I went, like that's fine. Like so. So once you've done that, uh, head back over to your camera and we are going to start by calling that event, which I believe I called scrub, like so. So we're going to get that. Uh, we next we are going to get a node called a get uh, sequence player, like so. So you're going to have to untick context context sensitive for this one, uh, and we want the level one. So that one, like so. Uh, next, drag off the target and re-enable context sensitive, and we want to promote it to a variable. Um, and we want to call this like sequence or something and we're going to make it a public variable like so. So next what we need to do is we need to drag off this and we need to get the current time like that. Uh, we then need to come off this one and we need to break it uh, and then we need to come off this one and we need to break the frame number uh, which is we're going to end up with as an integer. Uh, highlight it all, straighten it up keep things nice and neat. <clears throat> so next what we're going to do is we're going to take our axis value like this uh, and we're going to round it. So if you're using a thumbstick and you want to be able to go faster than sort of one frame a second, or, uh, sorry, faster than sort of it's, it's like frame rate, I guess. Um, so if you want to like fast forward, uh, then what you want to do first is use a float by a float and times this by a number. So if I go four, that means um, at the, the sort of axis maximum, uh, it'll go four times quicker than actual. Um, but if we're using a keyboard input, uh, then we're not going to have that like variableness to it. So it'll just be stuck at four, so which I don't want. So I'm going to put it at one. Next, what we're going to do is round it because uh, floats and integers are not the same thing. Uh, and then uh, you may have guessed what we're going to do. We're simply going to add these two values together. 
So we do out there plus integer plus an integer, which is going to give us a new variable. Uh, we're going to go off this and we're going to make a frame number. Uh, make frame number. We're going to go off this one. Uh, we're going to go off this one and we're going to make a frame time. And we're going to go off this one and we're going to go scrub. I think I'm ticks. Yeah, scrub two frames like so. Uh, then our event tick off there. Uh, and we can just grab this reference to our sequence and paste it in here and throw it in there. Like so. Easy peasy. So now if I hit play in the game and hit left and right on the keyboard, nothing happens. So, and we get some runtime errors, even though um, I have this sequence open. So it's probably not as good as the demo. So yeah, nothing's happening. So what we need to do, and this is where this is a bit funky, um, and I'll go into a little bit more depth in a second, but we need to put our sequence in the level like that. So just drag it out of the content browser into here, make sure autoplay is turned off and the play rate is at one. Um, leave everything else like as is, like that. Next, if we click on our camera under our sequence, if you remember we made it a public variable, we need to choose the test sequence. So now if we hit play, save it first, we hit left and right on the keyboard, we can scrub through it. But you may notice it's not synced to the open sequence panel. Um, and the reason for this is um, I have yet, if someone else knows how to, I'll be happy to hear how, but I, I've yet to figure out a way to reference the open sequence panel like we do with the open take recorder. Um, I'm afraid there's no like open sequence panel. Yeah. So that's really annoying. That's why we have to drag it out. But but it's okay because when we, like if we make a change to this sequence, that'll automatically update. We don't have to drag it out again or anything like that. Um, but it is does cause some headaches with the take recorder. So um, you can, let's, let's set our camera first, seeing as that's probably something everyone will have. You cannot, I'm afraid, just add the sequence to the take recorder and have it work. I hit play and hit record, you notice nothing happens. And as you can see, the unnamed source just has zero tracks because it's not actually recording anything because it lacks data to record, which is a bit annoying. <clears throat> so you have two options when it comes to recording um, your things. Um, the first one is just record the camera, uh, like so. so Hit record one like that, and then go into our sequence, our like existing sequence, and add that camera. Uh, so to do that, we just want to add a new track in our current sequence, uh, and we want the sub scenes track. Then sequence, and you can just choose whatever camera you just recorded. So like that one, um, and. Although it doesn't show it because I didn't record any camera movement, you know, we now have our camera track in here. So that is one way of doing it and works fine for smaller scenes, but uh, for some larger ones, okay, um, but for some larger scenes, more complex scenes, that can get a bit messy in my opinion. Um, so the other way to do it, uh, clear, yep, there you go. Uh, is uh, annoyingly is simply re-add everything that moves. So in our case, we would also add the statue as a source. So you can save these as a preset, so you don't have to every time you open the map add them all back to the take recorder. But as far that's the only way I could figure out to do it, I'm afraid. But now when we hit record, we will also record the statue which moves. Um, so you may also notice that it doesn't play when I hit record like how it would normally do. Um, and that one is because uh, we actually have to tell it to play now. 
Uh, so we're sort of overriding things. So um, I've got just the basic uh, record here. And so what you would do on the end of that is if we grab the sequence reference like so, uh, and just type play off of it, uh, enable context, no, disable it. Alrighty, so it turns out it was called play, but for some reason was not showing up before. So if you drag off it and type play, you'll get some play stuff. Uh, so we want, um, uh, we just want play. Like so. So this will start from wherever you scrub to. So if you scrub to halfway through the sequence and then hit record, it's going to go from there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing we need to do is add a three second delay between the t these two because um, by default the sequencer has a three second delay. Um, if you've ch taken off the delay or changed the delay then make sure you update this uh, like so. Uh, then we also just want a stop. Uh, now, you have an option here, you can stop it uh, and then reset it to the very beginning uh, or we can stop it at wherever it gets up to in its play and then it just stays there. Um, so, I guess either way the node works the same. So it's sort of up to you how you want that to work. Um, the last thing I would do is, so... Um, if you did the HUD tutorial, you will have a uh, a boolean called is recording or something, some sort of something record, just a way of keeping track of whether you're recording or not. Um, if uh, you don't have to do this, but I believe it's good if you add a branch node in here and add that variable like so, uh, then that'll prevent you from being able to scrub whilst it is recording. So you you don't have to worry about accidentally bumping the thumbstick or the keys or something, and it's sort of jumping funk, funnily, funkily, funnily, um, in a funny manner. So now, when we wanted the statue, as well. Now if we hit play, so left and right on the keyboard, I can scrub through. I hit the record button and. It goes just fine. Can it stop? So as you can see, it was stuck up there. So I can go bring it back, and we can do a second take. It's probably a bit boring having nothing, but that is scrubbing for you. And if we have a look at the last recording, uh, you'll see it recorded the camera and the object moving. Uh, so. This is, uh, yes and no, I've yet to do a huge amount of practice with this to figure out if this is really necessary or not, but um, I thought for the time being, hey, it's uh, sort of nice to have. Uh, so, thank you for that.